Hello and thank you for downloading the case study. Uh, so I've pre prepared a um, short 30 minute video which um, outlines the whole Fearless Coaching Program plus will give you an idea about the sorts of clients that I work with, how I've helped them and, and the uh, sorts of results which you can get. So I just thought I'd uh, dip in and say hello here on this little tiny video but I'm going to hand over to this handsome chap up here now who's going to take you through the, um, the, the case study presentation. So. Uh, in the next 30 minutes, you are going to be learning about how growing your business is not just about marketing. You will learn about why your business was set for failure before it had even launched. And also, I'll be telling you about the secret source, which is designed to nail your core product offer, pricing and value proposition. Um, and uh, is all based around our, our signature, the Fearless Business Signature Product Architecture Model. But also there's a couple of bonuses. Um, so if you watch this video to the end, um, I will tell you how you can get hold of a free copy of my best-selling book, Take Your Shot, uh, which is a nice little 90-minute story about one of my clients, um, and also how to book a free 30-minute diagnostic call with me. Um, so the key things really to remember that growing your business is not just about marketing. So quite often I see business owners, you, you're misdiagnosing the problems in your business, your mindset is also stuck, so you're not thinking like an entrepreneur. And a lot of the time you see yourself the same as your competition, so you're not differentiating yourself from your competition. And also you're not in the investment mindset, the entrepreneur mindset to reinvest in your business. So basically the way you perceive your business is that effort in equals money out, there's no profit on the bottom line, which is basically um, the same as a job. It's just that in a job you have one customer, in a business you have more than one customer. So let's go through each of those four things like step by step. So first up, you're misdiagnosing the symptoms. So you've got, you know you've got problems in your business, your problem where, but you just don't understand, like you don't fully understand what that problem is. So I worked with a local tool hire and repair company who were turning over about 20,000 pounds per month. They're a good little business, but they were convinced they had a sales and marketing problem. Um, and the only way that they felt they could grow their company was to acquire more customers, which is the same way that most businesses think. Um, however, on closer inspection, it transpired that they had over £10,000 worth of tools waiting to be repaired. Uh, many of their customers um, were in trades like construction, their plumbers, sparkies, etc. And they had actually accrued over £40,000 worth of trade debt. So added together, this amounted to over £50,000, which was two and a half times their, no their normal monthly revenues. Basically, this was cash which was sat on the table waiting to be collected with no overhead. Um, and so when I told them that they had to close the fucking doors to new customers for four weeks, they balked at it. They didn't want to do that. They thought they had a sales and marketing problem. They wanted more customers. But reluctantly, they did it. And we set about refactoring the invoices via an invoice financing company and clearing down the backlog of repairs. It only took six weeks. And they managed to collect in close to £48,000 after they'd um, given some of those fees away to the factoring company. So you can see that this wasn't a sales and marketing problem. Their business was actually broken. Their processes were broken. Um, and they weren't collecting the money in. Uh, the second thing to think about is the fact that your mindset is stuck. So you might even be thinking things like, will fearless business work for me? And trust me, that's normal. Most of my clients thought this before we worked together. Um, but normally this is the point where most business owners I speak to are stuck. And this is where I would ask the question or invite you to ask a different question. How long are you happy to let things carry on as they are? Um, many of my clients also said that they couldn't have done it without me. So that's just something to consider. So Fearless Business is, um, is designed to get you outside of your comfort zone. It is designed to get you thinking differently about your business and about yourself um, because basically what you're doing currently clearly isn't working. Otherwise, you probably wouldn't be watching this, this, um, this case study. So I'll give you a little example. Um, Dan and Sam bought a shed business three and a half years ago. Each shed um, brought in approximately £450. It created £100 profit and took approximately a day to build. Um, towards the end of our first consultation, they introduced me to Garden Studios. So these um, sort of fancy things you would see on Grand Designs. They sold for typically £15,000 each. They made 50% more profit than selling 30 sheds and took about a third of the time to build. So I asked them why they were selling sheds and not garden rooms. And their response was simple. We bought a shed business, so we've always sold sheds. 
And this is how I see most business owners working. Well, this is the way we've always done it, or this is the way our competition do it. They, um, for some reason, we, we start to lose sight of our imagination and can't see a different way forward with our businesses, and we just get stuck. So what we did with them is we set about introducing Garden Studios into their product portfolio, changed their website, did various other marketing um, activities around it. Um, they actually removed several of the sheds on their show forecourt and started building a showroom studio on the forecourt. What, in the process of building it, they took two deposits for studio studios before that one was even finished. And now their studios sell for £25,000 or more, and they're selling typically one, two or more per month. And they actually don't even take 10 days to build anymore because they built plenty of them. They now only take five days to build, not 10. So you can see the immediate improvement in their business just by a simple change in mindset, a simple uh, a change in vision for the business. Also, um, the next mistake is seeing yourself the same as a competition. So I asked a um, 2.14 million turnover at Kansi practice when they last put their prices up during a coaching session, and their answer was six years ago. So we immediately increased their prices by 10%, which led to their profits trebling within six months. Um, and basically the reason why they hadn't put their prices up, they felt that they would, go, they would lose ground in their competition and that they would potentially lose customers as a result. But when we implemented the price increases, not a single client left out of their roster of 2,500 clients during the price rises. And in fact, they got more customers as a result. The next thing I want to talk about is um, the investor mindset. So at the moment, I bet you're not reinvesting into your business. Now I've done loads of talks and words that crop up often um, are that we can run a business by doing it free or cheap or d d DIY, doing it yourself. Things I hear like Weebly, Wix, WordPress, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and basically all we're doing with all of those um, things is putting sticking plasters all over your business. The harsh reality is that you need to reinvest money back into your business. Um, so imagine this scenario, right, that each one of your customers is willing to spend £5,000 a year with you, or maybe more, maybe less, don't know. But I've got a minibus with 10 of your perfect clients in it. So each client has a black satchel full of £5,000 cash. I'm just going to nip out to my van and bring your new clients into your office. Each one of those clients is going to tip his satchel full of cash onto the desk in front of you. Now, all you've got to do is pay me some of that money. So how much would you pay me? 5%, 10%, 15%? Well, to be fair, I probably wouldn't get out of bed for much more than 20%, but, and this is the question, are you reinvesting 20% of your turnover or time back into your business through activities such as marketing? Now, when I do this to like audiences of 40, 50, 80, 100 people plus, there's typically only a small handful of people who are investing 20% of their turnover or time back into their business for things like marketing. Um, so most businesses don't, and I know why. It's because you don't actually know if that investment will work. So marketing is a little bit of trial and error, and you only really want to invest your money in things that are kind of have some kind of a guarantee that they'll work. Will it yield you results and will it get you more customers? Um, and the answer is, we don't know. So you simply don't invest in your business. And then you wonder why you struggle from month to month. So I'm just going to break out and give you a little bit of a background about myself. So um, I spent, uh, I set up a web design and marketing agency back in 2004 and ran that for 12 years and realized actually that the, the solution I was providing wasn't really answering deep, meaningful problems that my clients were experiencing i.e. most of their businesses were broken and I wanted to help explain and, uh, to them and help them work out why. So um, I wrote my first business um, book. It was called Online Business Startup. It became a bestseller. It's got um, well over 200 reviews now. It actually got to number 30 overall on Kindle, which doesn't sound terribly impressive, but um, most of the other books up there were things like Fifty Shades of Grey and stuff like that. So um, really for me, it was about changing. Um, I wanted to change people's perceptions um, of, of starting up a business and what the amount of work which you actually had to put into it and start to change the mindset um, in regards to marketing and, and investing in your business and things like that. So that book had some moderate success. A couple of other things, you know, I'm a surfer, I'm a keen cyclist, um, and these are core values which now I have, like that freedom, flexibility with working, and it's part of the reason why I set up um, my coaching practice in the first business, why I started Fearless Business. Um, and actually now I run a local networking event, I do lots of speaking 
Um, uh, I have lots of speaking opportunities. I deliver workshops and advice clinics through the local enterprise partnership and growth hub. I've got my fearless coaching program. I run breakthrough sessions with clients and my core program is one-to-one -one coaching. Um, and basically I deliver strategy, not tactics. I'm not here to tell you how to what to do with your website, search engine optimization, that sort of thing. I'm here to change your mindset around running business. But the key thing for me is actually about having fun in business. Um, but when I set up my coaching practice, there are a couple of things which I, uh, a couple of things around the way that I designed it um, to, in order to kind of create success, not just for me, but for my clients. I wanted a framework that worked for me and for everybody that I worked with. So the first framework is the one which I'm going to share with you. Um, and, and this is the real reason why your business was set to fail before it even launched. Um, as they say in the army, proper planning and preparation prevents piss poor performance. Um, many business owners simply don't plan for the future of your business. And you basically started out because you thought your, or your mum or your spouse or your friend thought that it was a, a great idea. You know, you create, had this idea for a product or a business, but ultimately you didn't have a great business for the idea. You didn't plan the business. And maybe you've seen other people do it successfully and thought that you could do it, but you must remember that you're not them, you're different to them. And also, you never really think about why you do what you do. So you're just getting up every day on autopilot, doing the things that other people tell you to do, all these marketing experts and gurus, go to networking events, do Facebook ads, write blog articles, but you don't really understand like why you're doing that. Um, and so um, basically, I've created the fearless goals model, which is the answer to why. So imagine this scenario, you're doing all of those things every day in your business. Each one of these green crosses represents an activity you do in your business every day. Um, you know, it could be um, uh, maybe um, uh, an email, it could be uh, going to a networking group or, you know, getting the hoover out, pushing it around the office. It could be a, maybe a sales meeting, maybe a blog article, a podcast interview or any number of different things. So when I show this to people during my talks, they typically say that looks like a bit of a mess. Um, and we have to-do lists which we think give us a bit of direction, but actually a to-do list just becomes another thing to add to our to-do list. And actually, as entrepreneurs, we just tend to jump from one activity to the next with no real sense of direction. So very simply, all we do is we put a goal in place. Um, and immediately you can start to see that these activities start to drive us towards our goal. Uh, this came from Napoleon Hill's way of thinking. Um, in Think and Grow Rich about the fact that you have to have three things in order to create success in a business or in life generally. You have to have a very clear idea about what your goal is, like what direction you're heading in. You need to know what activities you need to do in order to achieve that goal and you also have to have a huge desire to achieve that goal. Otherwise, it just doesn't happen. Like with business, it will kick you in the bollocks from time to time and you will, you know, it's about having the resilience to, to get back up and get back on that horse or bike and, and keep on driving towards your goal. So a simple example I've got is if you want a six-figure business, have 10 clients a month at £1,000 a month's worth of revenue per client. This gives you £10,000 of revenue per month. Multiply that by 12, you get 120 grand a year's worth of revenue. And then we can start to identify what activities will get us close to our goal. When you start to do a new activity in your, in your business, so like sending out an email, is that going to get me close to my goal or not? Well, we don't know, but trust your gut instinct and start to identify the activities that aren't serving your business and don't do them. And immediately what that does is it creates um, time, which you can then focus on the activities which will get you close to your goal. Now something happens called self-sabotage. So maybe like, you know, when I first set up my coaching practice, I set a goal, I wanted 10 clients actually at 250 pound a month. I wanted to generate two and a half grand a month's worth of revenue within the first three months of setting up that coaching program, uh, coaching practice. But I also had opportunities to write, take your shot. I had opportunities to do pod, set up a podcast and get that running. And quite frankly, if I'd pursued either of those, I wouldn't have managed to get 14 clients within the first six weeks of setting up my coaching practice. Um, you know, I was just doggedly determined to focus on the activities that got me clients, and that was it. I had one thing to focus on. So, but being British, what we tend to do is we'll get to kind of, you know, the bottom part of here, just outside the noisy zone, realize that we're getting derailed, but fear of failure, fear of not finishing what we started, um, fear of letting people down, fear fear of like, you know, success even, or fear of failure. There's all sorts of different fears which crop up here. 
and basically we carry on regardless and that's called self-sabotage. So we want to be very clear about what activities get us close to our goals. So it could be at the bottom of the pile, maybe connect with somebody on LinkedIn, they respond, you have a messenger conversation, you email, you set up a meeting. During that meeting, you pitch a, um, uh, your product to them and then finally they, they, the message hits home, they understand what you do and they buy your product. Like this stuff isn't rocket science, you know, this is, this is all relatively straightforward stuff. So um, basically our secret sauce is, is in part it's that gold model that I've just kind of talked you through. Um, but also um, it's about, uh, we, we have a, I've designed a product architecture model which is um, basically made to um, nail your product offer, your pricing and your value proposition. So it clearly defines who you are and what your business does, um, what value you can deliver for, for your customers and your prospects. But first, it's, it's worthwhile just getting um, an understanding about what the difference is between a product and a service business. So um, I actually work with predominantly with service businesses. So they might be accountants, law firms, creative agencies or creative freelancers, coaches and consultants. So anybody really who exchanges some element of time for money, some kind of service. Basically, services are that, that exchange of time for money. But on the flip side, products have a clearly defined set of features with a guaranteed outcome and for a fixed price, okay? And what cuts through that then is the value proposition because if you've got a set of features, you've got guaranteed outcomes and the price is um, tangible, um, you can start to tell stories about it to prospects and they really truly understand what the value proposition is behind your business. Um, and this is what sits at the core of our, of, of our program. So just to give you a flavor of kind of how Fearless Business works and what sort of things you will be you'll be working through, um, there's there's kind of seven steps really. So module one, we look at goals basically. So we'll start by identifying your personal and your business goals. Um, I'll go really deep on why these goals are important to you. Um, and also identify like what it is that you're moving away from. So the reason why people sign up to Fearless is because they wanna change something about their business or themselves in order to create um, a more prosperous business or greater success for themselves. But it's clear, to, we have to make it clear what exactly is, what, um, what pain points it is that you're moving away from. Um, and then we'll identify how, how we're going to go about achieving those goals. And also how we go about, how we, how we measure success. Um, you know, once we've achieved those goals or if we don't hit the goals, um, is, is, does, is that still successful? Module two, so this is the product architecture model, we'll then go through your, your core products. So we'll identify three to five core products that you can sell. So this is a process of taking your services, identifying the features, identifying, nailing down the price and the value proposition, what outcome you deliver, and calling it a product and selling it like a product. We'll basically be redesigning your offer and making sure that your value proposition is absolutely watertight and getting you absolutely clear on your target market and routes to market. The idea being, I want such, I want to create such clarity on your product offering that you would be happy to offer a 100% money back guarantee on that product without it being a gimmick. That's ultimately where we want to get to. Module three, um, so there's seven modules. So module three, we then look at pricing. And the initial part is nailing down the pricing strategy. So uh, one of the common pricing mistakes is to compare yourself to the competition, but they might all be charging the same. How do we actually know whether they're right or not? One of the immediate things that we'll be looking for is ways to increase your prices. But I'll be teaching you how to stack value and build your value proposition so that you can sell with confidence and clarity. Um, it's not about creating USPs, it's about um, it's about creating value, like what valuable outcomes are you creating for your clients. Part of that is also getting comfortable with being told no, with people saying to you no, but also with you saying no to prospects. Um, scarcity mindset in small business means that we just take on any work that we can possibly get coming our way, and the reality is that doesn't build a sustainable business. So the pricing module is all about how can we, how can we price our products to create a sustainable business. Next up, we then look at the customer journey. So we define qualifiers or design qualifiers to ensure that you're attracting the right customers. Uh, we introduce a consultation process to build rapport with prospects. And we ensure that every prospect has a consistent experience with you. 
So sometimes because business owners are so desperate to take on new business, they'll skip an ass the assessment process, they'll skip the consultation, and they'll just take on a, a, a customer without really vetting them, and then wonder why that customer becomes a pain in the ass. Um, also, as a part of this process, we'll get to know your numbers and increase conversions. I once did a talk in front of 80 people and invited them to tell me, I, well, I asked them, um, if anybody knew their numbers in their business, could they, did they know how many leads they were getting in versus how many um, sales conversations they had versus how many times they were converting? And only two people out of the 80 said that they could. One said, mm, maybe, and the other one went 842. And they worked for, I think, St. James's Place, a financial advisor, so they knew their numbers really, really well. Um, and most business owners don't, and therefore their business isn't predictable. That's why they're not willing to reinvest into it because a business just doesn't function in a predictable fashion. Other things that we'll be looking at, so next up, customer lifetime value. So it's not just about your core products, that what we call the front end product that we sell um, as a commodity. It's also about um, uh, what happens next. So you'll learn about how to build a sustainable business on a recurring revenue um, uh, model and how to get loyal customers who buy from you time and time and time and time again. Uh, module six, we then focus on mindset and implementation. The reason why we don't start with this is because you've got to have the right tools in place and you've got to understand how those tools work. So we move you into a place of um, conscious competence or conscious, um, conscious incompetence where you don't know what you don't know. Um, and let's face it, what you've been doing so far hasn't been working for you. And normally it's because the business owner has the wrong mindset. I'm not gonna lie, I'm not gonna beat about the bush. It's not because the things they're doing wrong, it's because the mindset that they apply to it is wrong. So, and, and basically it's because you don't know what you don't know. So we'll, you'll get some practical tools and mindset techniques to learn to do things differently. Just as an example, when I first met Richard and Amy, who run a local web design business, um, they were making less than a thousand pounds a month, um, charging a commoditized, you know, they're building WordPress websites for sort of a few hundred quid and eight pounds per month support and hosting. Um, sort of 18 months on, we've had to go through various mindset um, shifts where they, we've doubled and trebled their prices. Their core package now is 1,200 pounds. They still have a waiting list of clients and they're charging five times the price, 50 pound a month for support, ongoing support and hosting as a bare minimum. Um, I think last month, Richard closed close to £6,000 worth of business, with approximately £2,500 worth of that being recurring revenue. So even if he stopped building websites, he still got a sustainable business there, which he didn't have before. And now, like I'm really pleased these guys are, they've recently got married, and they're saving up, I think, to move house because they've got a young family, young growing family, um, and, and want to move. So they've got the capacity now with that five or six thousand pounds a month's worth of revenue to start saving up for a deposit for their next house. Next up then, and finally, rather than starting with marketing, we actually finish with marketing. So we fix all of the problems in the business and with the business owner, and then we focus on switching it up a gear and um, again, I've got a very robust system for um, for marketing businesses. Um, and the reason we cover marketing last is because that most businesses are broken in the first instance. Um, and basically marketing a poorly performing business is like putting lipstick on a pig. So um, we leave marketing until last, we fix all of the problems in the business. And then when we do release your business out into the ether, um, it, it then looks like you're selling remarkable products with remarkable outcomes for a really good price. So the results basically, we have one objective and this is to double your turnover as quickly as you possibly can. We've done it for a number of businesses in as little as three to six months. Um, and just to give you an example, so um, we have the golf pro uh, story and this is what Take Your Shot is based on. So Russ was a golf professional and he had three problems in his business. So if it rained on a Saturday, anything up to six of his eight students wouldn't show up to lessons. He collected cash at the end of the lessons so if students didn't show up um, then he wouldn't get paid. And also it cost Russ five pound an hour to hire the bays where he taught lessons. So on a really bad day, he'd make just 10 pounds, which was barely enough to cover his fuel for the day. Um, and essentially, like the questions that Russ was asking his prospects were too vague. So he was asking things like, how long have you played golf for? What clubs do you play with? When can you start lessons? And actually what Russ should have been asking was, why do you want golf lessons? Um, and he told me a story about a salesman, a client of his, who had just been hired at a new company. And his first assignment was to play a four ball with the CEO of that company, you know, two and a half thousand employees, I think it was. And what he wanted to get from the lessons was to outdrive his CEO 
basically so the CEO CEO noticed Russ's client um, you know on the first tee um, uh, you know just started this business and wanted to make a great first impression so um, what we ended up doing was creating five products for Russ uh, driving 20 yards further drive more accurately lowering your handicap by 10 strokes improving your short game and lowering your putting average <coughs> Excuse me. We worked out that each product could be delivered in an eight-week program, provided that the students showed up to all eight lessons come rain, snow, typhoon, hail, whatever, um, and that they practiced two or three times in between lessons. So the contract was born, and we came up with this very simple like sign-up sheet for, for new, new people. Um, the next question then was, Russ asked me, how can we make more money? So... He was charging £25 per lesson, so if you were to do a rough calculation over eight weeks, that would produce um, about £200 worth of revenue minus his costs. And I actually suggested we charge £595 for the eight-week programme. Russ had a mild heart attack. He said that that was far too high and all of his competitors would laugh at him. But he agreed to print out 10 copies of the contract that we designed and pitch it to the next 10 prospects um, who walked into the, um, the pro shop. Uh, so he sold three programs in the first week, which was pretty impressive. Uh, and then, you know, the contract was born, basically. Uh, Take Your Shot was born. So I actually based um, Take Your Shot on Russ's story. Um, great opportunity for you here. Um, if you want to write down this, this website address, obviously it's on the video as well, but if you want a free copy of Take Your Shot, I'm more than happy to um, pop a copy of it in the post to you. I've had, I think it's now got over 270 odd reviews. People said that it's um, an inspirational story. You can read it in 90 minutes. You get a ton of like bus valuable business advice. It's got all the core principles of the Fearless Business Coaching Program. So it walks through um, building customer lifetime. It walks through goal setting, pricing, mindset, and various other things like that. So you can get a hold of a copy by going to bit.ly forward slash TYS promo. Bitly is um, case sensitive. So TYSP is uppercase. So, and I'll, like I said, go and pop your details into there. You'll get a PDF straight away through email, but I'll also pop a hard copy of that um, in the post to you as well. Um, it's a great introduction to the Fearless Business Program. Um, also, um, I mentioned about the fact that um, uh, I offer a free 30 minute diagnostic call. So, there's a, um, a short assessment form which I invite you to take, but if you um, click on the button below this video and I'll put a link on uh, it'll be on YouTube as well but um, if you if you click a um, click on that you'll be able to book a free 30 minute diagnostic call with me so we can start taking action start um, turning your business around look at doubling your turnover in as short time as possible I can introduce you work out whether the fearless coaching program is a good fit for you or not um, and and we can get started right away so be, be fearless um, and I look forward to seeing you on the Fearless Business Coaching Programme.